This is your News Now Sports. The 11th ranked Ohio Northern volleyball team sits atop the OAC standings with just five conference matches left in the regular season. ONU has won 20 games while remaining perfect in conference play with a 5-0 record. The Polar Bears are searching for their fourth straight regular season OAC title, all while preparing for the end of an era amongst the program. Our Kitty Gilhooly has more from the ONU Sports Center. As the end of the regular season nears, the ONU volleyball team hopes to keep momentum rolling as they head into a tough stretch of their schedule. It's going to be a grind to win the, the conference regular season, and then after that we, we get reseeded and then we play our conference tournament. That will be another grind. Whoever wins our conference regular season and tournament by far will be the best team and will represent well in the NCAA and getting a tournament bid. So, and I believe our conference is good enough this year to get three or four teams in. And for the five seniors on this team, this year is about leading by example. If you're in your position, if you're not maybe necessarily the one out on the court, we're still helping each other out and we're still being really supportive teammates. And when it's maybe not your chance, but it does become your chance, we're all just a really tight-knit group of girls that are really just want the best out of the six people who are out on that court. As the Polar Bears prepare to close out the regular season, they're also preparing to say goodbye to their coach, who is stepping down after 29 years at the helm. You just have to take it in stride and take it one moment at a time, but then enjoy it, you know, and that's why I think it was, I really like the fact that people knew that this was after 29 years the end, so I could enjoy them as much as they enjoyed me. With Coach Woody leaving, it's kind of the end of the era and a start of a new era, and I think what we we, as five seniors, we want to uh, leave the program in a better place than where we started when we were freshmen, and I think uh, we're on the right track to do that. In Ada, Katie Gilhooly, your News Now Sports. Thanks, Katie. Well, it's time now for the play of the week as we recap another seven days of sports. The postseason has begun for plenty of fall sports, but this week's highlight reel play comes from the gridiron as we highlight week eight of the high school football season. A key clash in Wapak as the Redskins host Salina. Third quarter, Reed Miracle work and play action before lofting one over the middle. And how about that catch by Evan Keck? needing only one hand to reel in the touchdown reception as we look at it once again. It all starts from the miracle fake and then it's Keck showing it can be much more than a big bruising back. Walpock wins their third in a row in convincing fashion. The Redskins shut out Salina 38-0. We need to take a break here on Your News Now Sports, but when we return we recap week seven in the NFL as the Bengals search for their first win while the Lions look to avoid a third straight loss. Full highlights coming up next. Five NFL teams hired a new coach this offseason, and Bengals headman Zach Taylor is one of just two of those coaches who has yet to win a game with his new team. The 0-6 Bengals at home today, hoping to get into the win column, playing host to the Jaguars. Late second quarter, it's 3-0 Jags when Andy Dalton connects with Alex Erickson. This is a gain of 48 yards deep inside Jacksonville territory. Erickson leads the Bengals with 137 yards receiving on eight catches today. Later in the drive, second and goal for Cincy, and Dalton hits Joe Mixon for the two-yard touchdown as the Bengals take the lead, but the Jags come right back. Third and 15 for Gardner Minshew, and he has plenty of time to find D.D. Westbrook, who makes a fantastic catch inside the Bengals 15. That would lead to a Jacksonville field goal at 7-6 Bengals at the half. Fourth quarter, Bengals still clinging to a one-point lead before Minshew lost one for Keelan Cole, who comes back to it to make the grab. A two-yard hookup on third and goal puts Jacksonville back on top 17-10. Late fourth now, same score, and it's disaster for Andy Dalton as he tries to set up a screen that is picked off by Yannick Ngakwe, who returns it 20. 23 yards for the pick six as the Jags all but seal it. Garbage time now for the Bengals when Dalton sneaks into the end zone for his third rushing touchdown of the season. But the Bengals fall to 0-7 with a 27-17 loss. It's been very tough to be in the position that we're in right now. To not have won a game at this point. And it's, the standard's way higher than that. And so um, all we can do is put our head down, go to work, and... Try to get a win next week. To Detroit we go with a key NFC North showdown as the Lions welcome the Vikings. First quarter, remember this connection as Matthew Stafford hits Marvin Jones, who spins off of a tackle and takes it in for six. A 16-yard touchdown hookup as Detroit draws first blood. The Vikings would have an immediate answer, though, as Kirk Cousins rolls to his left. And how about this throw on the money in the back of the end zone to Adam Thielen, who gets his feet down as Minnesota ties things up at seven. Late first quarter, same score went on second and goal. Stafford hits Jones 
Jones again for another touchdown. This one from three yards out, making it 14-7 Detroit. Final seconds of the first half now. Lions trailing, and guess who? Marvin Jones hauls in his third touchdown catch of the day as it's a shootout at Ford Field. 21 all at the half. Late fourth quarter, Lions down two scores. You can probably guess what happens here as Stafford finds Jones for the score. Jones becomes the first Lions player in the Super Bowl era with four receiving touchdowns in a game, but it all comes in a losing effort. As Stafford is picked off by Trey Waynes, the Lions lose their third straight, 42-30. to We knew on a short week we'd have to come out and try to, you know, play well, play together, and, and do everything we could to win. Um, you know, thought the guys worked through the course of the week, but, you know, obviously didn't show up here today on Sunday. So just need to uh, go back, go back to work, improve, try to get better, get everybody on the field that we can, and, um, you know, try to get ready to go this week too. We finish on the racetrack as the NASCAR postseason continues in Kansas today. Pick it up with only four laps to go. Denny Hamlin has the lead, but Bubba Wallace loses a tire on the back stretch. Matt Tift also involved in this wreck as the caution comes out, and that caution would send the race into overtime. And in the first overtime, there's contact between Brad Keselowski and Daniel Suarez. Then another Daniel would be swept up in it. Pole sitter Daniel Hemrick. Joey Logano was also sent spinning through the infield grass for a 17th place finish. Final lap in the second OT now. Chase Elliott was on Denny Hamlin's trail, but he could not get past the 11. Hamlin took checkers for his fifth win this season, but for Chase Elliott, the second place finish was enough for him to advance into the round of eight as the last car into the field. The round of eight begins next Sunday at Martinsville Speedway, Katie. All right, thanks so much, Matt. We'll wrap things up after the break.